Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, in a previous video, we compared the Japanese battleship Yamato to Battleship New Jersey. One of the comments on that video requested that we do a similar comparing the battleship Bismarck to an Iowa-class battleship. So, you're getting that today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Bismarck, but more specifically, I'll be comparing her sister ship Tirpitz to uh, Iowa and New Jersey because uh, Bismarck was sunk long before the, uh, the Iowas came into service. And Tirpitz got some updates and some extra stuff that Bismarck didn't have because she was rushed into service. Uh, I'm just going to leave it out there right up front. I am not a Kriegsmarine fanboy. Uh, so I will try to be as fair and honest with this as possible, but if you're watching this video for someone to tell you how great uh, Bismarck was compared to American battleships, uh, this might not be the video for you. So, first off, uh, let's compare some of the numbers on these ships. Yamato was the largest battleship ever built. She was designed specifically to be that at the time. Uh, the Iowas were the second largest, and the Bismarcks were the third largest ever built, and the largest ships to ever come out of, or the largest battleships to ever come out of Europe. Uh, however, neither the Iowas nor the Bismarcks were intended to be the largest or the end-all be-all. They just happened to be the last class of ship authorized. Uh, so, even though these ships are large, they're, they're not everything that their countries hoped they would be. So let's start with displacement. Um, Bismarck and Tirpitz both entered service in 1941. The Iowas didn't enter service until 1943. Uh, the Iowas entered service at about 57,000 tons full load displacement. Uh, the Bismarcks entered service at about 52,000 tons full load displacement. So just a little bit smaller in weight. We'll see later on, did that extra weight give the Iowas any sort of significant advantage? The answer is yes. As you can see here, an Iowa-class battleship is slightly longer. Bismarck is 792 foot 8 inches long. An Iowa uh, is 887 foot 3 inches long. Uh, Bismarck does have a little bit more width than an Iowa. Iowas are 108 foot in, uh, 3 inches wide, so they can fit through the Panama Canal. Bismarck had no such restrictions, so she was able to be a little bit wider, uh, which theoretically made her a better sea boat. She would have rolled less and a better gunnery platform. And these ships were reportedly very, very good gunnery platforms. Uh, their beam was 118 feet one inch, so a full 10 feet wider than in Iowa. Bismarck and Tirpitz had 12 boilers to an Iowa class is eight, uh, and their three propellers were able to get them up to 30 knots of speed. Iowa class battleships had four propellers and could do 33 knots speed, so that narrow and longer hull uh, was able to get them a little bit more hydrodynamically efficient for more speed. Well, something to keep in mind when you think about Bismarck-class battleships, the, the victors of World War I were able to test armor and guns and new designs uh, in the interwar period, and uh, Germany really wasn't able to do that. They were really limited in what they could do. Their ships were taken from them and tested by the victorious nation. So they, uh, their ships are less efficient. Uh, Bismarck is basically a scale up of the last Imperial German Navy battleship design, the Baden class. Uh, and they, they lengthen that design to get a higher speed. Uh, but really, the hull form is very similar. Notice how it's 
tapers at both the bow and the stern like a canoe, whereas the Iowas get wider throughout their whole length. It's a little bit more hydrodynamically efficient. Uh, they also had, uh, the Bismarcks had uh, kind of antiquated armor schemes. They basically had a World War I armor scheme. And uh, their armor scheme, and there's a picture of it right next to me here, is very similar to World War I ship, and it's very good for close range fighting. Uh, it's not so great for long range fighting or uh, for protecting them against plunging fire or aerial hits. Um, how important is that? The Germans designed these ships before radar became a huge thing, uh, so long range firing wasn't really a concern, and uh, when these ships did get into fights, it was at relatively short range. The longest hits ever made by a battleship against a moving target was only at about 13 miles. Um, both the British battleship Warspite and the German battleship Scharnhorst achieved hits at that distance, uh, but no other battleship achieved hits further away. So even though ships like New Jersey could fire over 20 miles, uh, they never scored hits like that against moving targets. So, uh, in theory, the German armor scheme is going to be inferior to the... Uh, it's not going to protect them against American shells at extreme long range. Uh, in practice, the two times that German battleships uh, of the Bismarck class uh, engaged enemy battleships, it was at relatively close range and wasn't really impacting their thinner deck armor, it was impacting their belt armor. Uh, their belt armor isn't too uh, significantly, too much thicker than an Iowa class's belt armor. Iowa's had 12.2 uh, inch belt armor angled, uh, it was part of a layer of armor plate. The German battleships had their belt armor had their belt armor about 13 inches thick, but then they also had a turtle deck armor inside of that. So a shell that manages to punch through the belt armor, an armor-piercing shell, would probably be detonated before it hit that angled deck armor. Uh, and so even though American battleships had very effective armor-piercing shells, uh, it's doubtful that they would have been able to fire and shoot them through the belt armor and then through the angled deck armor into the vitals on the inside of the ship. Uh, so you're not going to get a hit on a ship like this that outright destroys it one off. Uh, other ways that this design is kind of antiquated, it uses the four twin turret layouts. Most other countries had uh, gone to three triple turrets at this point, uh, or uh, in some cases quadruple turrets. Uh, the, the Germans liked this arrangement, uh, as did some other designers, and so uh, you can call it antiquated, you can call it uh, still state-of-the-art. If a single turret is knocked out, you're only losing two barrels, you still have six. Uh, if a single turret on New Jersey is knocked out, you lose three barrels, you're down to six. Uh, and it gives a very balanced and visually appealing look to the ship. Uh, let's see. Another archaic callback is these battleships had... Uh, no dual purpose secondary guns. They had uh, 5.9 inch guns in twin turrets here, and then they had 4.1 inch guns uh, in twin turrets above it, and these uh, 5.9 inch guns were supposed to be for defense against destroyers, and the 4.1 inch guns were supposed to be for uh, anti-aircraft defense. In practice, they used all of these guns for anti-surface and anti-aircraft work, uh, they just weren't optimized for both. Uh, and that might have caused some issues. 
So if you've got multiple shell sizes exploding out there, you're not quite sure which gun was firing that and how to adjust. So uh, Bismarck did a notoriously poor job of defending herself against aircraft. Uh, and let me tell you, if somebody's trying to kill me, I'm going to use every weapon at my disposal, too. Uh, so I, I understand why they were shooting 15-inch shells at swordfish and 6-inch shells and 4-inch shells and whatnot. Uh, Bismarck just wasn't designed to succeed in an environment like that, unfortunately. Uh, she was also rushed into service. If they had have delayed it a couple of months, she could have sailed with her sister ship Tirpitz or uh, Scharnhorst or Nisenau or even one of the pocket battleships and made her voyage a little bit more potent. Uh, and she could have gotten a complete set of modern anti-aircraft rangefinders. Uh, as it happened, some of her anti-aircraft rangefinders were uh, of two different styles, as were some of her 4.1-inch anti-aircraft guns. Uh, so that probably complicated her anti-aircraft arrangement, and much has been said about her guns were designed to track against modern aircraft. So when uh, she was engaged by swordfish biplanes, the guns could not track at low enough speeds, uh, around 90 to 120 knots, uh, to engage these low, slow-flying aircraft. Uh, and they were able to eventually critically damage Bismarck by disabling her rudders. Uh, and because she has the kind of archaic three propeller style, it was almost impossible to maneuver these ships uh, by propellers alone if the rudders got knocked out. And it was certainly more difficult when the rudders were jammed at a certain angle and trying to counteract that and turn. Uh, so that eventually led to the loss of Bismarck, but it took a number of cruisers and destroyers with their torpedoes and gunnery and two Royal Navy battleships to finally put, put her down. A brand new King George V and an older uh, Rodney, which was armed with 16 inch guns. Let's move on to Tirpitz because Tirpitz survived a lot later. She had a uh, better electronics suite and a better uh, anti aircraft suite. This still didn't stack up well to uh, American fire control. Uh, the American radar rangefinders were superior to the German ones, although the German optical rangefinders, they, they proved that they worked pretty well during World War II. Uh, their anti-aircraft rangefinders and anti-aircraft suites were inferior, however. So, uh, Tirpitz had eight torpedo tubes on board. American battleships at this time didn't have them. Uh, this was probably more of a liability than an asset. If those torpedoes were hit, that's a huge warhead going off. They were on regular rotating tubes on the main deck. Uh, and they were only effective at a couple of miles, so that's not too effective. Uh, the ship did get uh, upwards of 50 or 60 20 millimeter guns. And the 20 millimeter is an excellent close in anti-aircraft gun. But they never had a really effective intermediate gun. There, there, were, uh, there were 16 37 millimeter guns on these ships, uh, but that was really ineffective. So looking at the anti-aircraft weapons on this Bismarck model, and compare it to this Iowa class model, you can see four more guns. In 1943, uh, New Jersey had uh, 16 quadruple 40 millimeter mounts and uh, as many as 49 20 millimeter guns for closer in defense. So, much more effective anti aircraft suite with much more effective uh, rangefinders. Uh, also take a look at the aviation facilities. The American battleships do not have a hangar for their aviation facilities, uh, and the aircraft and crane is stored at the fantail. If the volatile aviation gas blows up, if the ship takes a hit, 
It's at the unarmored fantail, uh, and it just sort of burns back there, and it's no significant damage. Bismarck does have a hangar for her aircraft. However, it's located amidship, so a hit there with the aviation gas and the flammable airplanes and whatnot uh, does do some significant damage to your superstructure, and it obscures all your rangefinders and things in this area. So, for a final summation, the German battleships were horribly inefficient. Uh, the American battleships were designed to treaty limitation, so they were designed to be 45,000 tons standard and grew to be 57,000 tons full load. Uh, so their armor scheme, their weapons having a dual purpose gun, whatnot, uh, was just more efficient than this German ship. So for almost the same weight, 52,000 tons opposed to 57,000 tons, you have significantly less fighting power. Uh, you have comparable side armor, less deck armor, you have uh, one less barrel per gun and one less inch per barrel. So these are eight 15 inch guns on here. Uh, so you have lower range, uh, a much lighter projectile. Uh, you've got a slower speed. Bismarck was designed to be fast at 30 knots, but New Jersey was faster at 33 knots. So really in every way, except maybe close range knife fighting armor, uh, the German battleship is inferior at a very similar weight class. Uh, but Tirpitz was, uh, Tirpitz and Bismarck were built a couple years before the Iowas. They're about a half a generation removed. Uh, so really a more fair comparison would be to uh, compare this to say uh, Massachusetts or Alabama, one of the South Dakota class battleships, which are much more similar. They had a lower caliber 16 inch gun with uh, less range. They had uh, basically the same armor. They only had a 27 knot speed. Uh, so it would be an almost fair fight between a South Dakota and a Bismarck. However, Bismarck 52,000 tons, the South Dakotas are 10,000 tons lighter, around 42,000 tons full load, and uh, 35,000 tons standard design displacement. So that, that just shows the inefficiency. The, the Allies were building comparable battleships for 10,000 tons less. And do you know how many Panzer tanks you can build for an extra 10,000 tons of steel? All right, uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Check back in later for more content. Uh, if you've got another ship you would like to compare, you would like us to compare New Jersey to, uh, leave a comment down in the description. Uh, my inclination is to do HMS Hood next. We just talked about Bismarck, now it's time to talk about Hood. Uh, and Hood, as the first fast battleship, will make a, an interesting comparison to her successor 20 years later. Uh, so thanks for watching today, and if you would like to support us, check the link down below. Uh, any support you give us helps the museum fulfill our mission and helps us continue to create content like this.